Our movie today is The Blind Side. It's a true story, and it begins in the movie with this upper-class family driving in their expensive car on a cold, rainy night, and they pass by this teenage boy walking down the road, not dressed for the weather. A conversation ensues amongst the family in the car, and the mother, Leanne Tui, tells her husband, Sean, to turn the car around and go back. We find out what a big turnaround this means for the teenager, Michael Orr, and the impact it will have on the Tui family. They bring him to their home with the intention of just a short stay. But the whole family ends up claiming him as one of their family members. The family endures ridicule from school friends, school administrators, and their country club friends and family for allowing a teenage 320-pound black kid to come into their home. Leanne Tui lets her country club friends and family know that this child needs a place to belong, and he is part of their family. No one is going to make her fearful of having a big black boy living in the same house with her teenage daughter and 10-year-old son. No one is going to threaten her because of his skin color or lack of education. No one's going to tell her that he is not, not capable of learning. She's a Christian woman, but she doesn't flaunt it. She's on a mission to do the right thing for this child. God is working through Leanne Tui. What do the children in the movie teach us about God? That's what we're going to look at. The words of Jesus, unless you turn and become as children, you will not enter the kingdom of God. As the disciples listened to Jesus, they had no idea what the kingdom was. And Jesus warned them to turn around because they were going in the wrong direction. How do we catch a glimpse of a child through, catch a glimpse of God through a child? I have a suggestion. When you're watching a child or you're engaging in play or conversation or whatever, you're there, present, whatever gift they bring in that moment, name that. What is that gift? What makes you smile and experience joy. That's what we're going to do this morning as we see various clips of the three kids that are in this movie. The first one, Collins, she's the Tui's intelligent teenage daughter and she's active in sports and she's popular among all her friends in her all-white private school. She hangs out with a group of friends at, that they all look down their nose at Michael. Well, today I'm going to try something new on you. I want you to participate. Yes, that means actually you get to say something. One word is all you need to say. Yeah, I see some of that going around. I do, and I'm fearful, so you get to, okay? So I want you to watch the clip of Collins and name a gift you see in her. What made you smile or experience joy? Let's watch. What did you discover? What gift did you see? Love. What else? Acceptance. Acceptance. What else? Goodness. Goodness. Compassion. Compassion. What else? Thoughtfulness. Thoughtfulness. Learning. Learning. Awareness. Awareness. Equality. Equality. Jesus. Jesus. Beautiful. Well, it made me smile <clears throat> when she moved from her group of friends to sit with Michael. She showed how much she valued Michael as part of her family and as a child of God. She didn't need words, only actions. Those spoke volumes, her actions. 
She was made strong through God's gift of humility. But in order to receive that gift, she had to be dependent on God's lead. She trusted what she had seen modeled by her parents, and she trusted God's direction, the gift of her innocence welcoming all. That's what God desires of us. We can be part of the kingdom when we practice humility. It frees us from pride and arrogance. We don't need to act like big shots. When we act out of humility, our motives and our attitudes respond differently. Instead of becoming defensive and lashing out when we're criticized, we respond with compassion and kindness, yet firmness. We may not win our way, way of winning, but our actions will be godly, and that's a win for God. Well, next is S.J. He's the youngest, Tui. He is confident and full of energy. He becomes Michael's trainer in preparing to play football. S.J. has a wealth of knowledge about sports since he does live with a family that breathes and lives, eats, everything sports. Let's look at his gifts as we watch this clip on S.J. What gifts did you see? Courage. Encouragement. Motivator. Pardon? Motivator. Can somebody? Motivator. Motivator. Thank you. Reassurance. Reassurance. Say that. Brotherly love. Well, I too saw him as an encourager who is persistent and doesn't give up on Michael. He's not intimidated by Michael's size, but he's excited to have him as his brother. What does this tell us about God? Well, the gifts that we just named for SJ, those are the same things for God. God is full of grace helping us over and over. God is always with us, encouraging us to build the kingdom one person at a time. If our aim in life is to acquire lots of things or become the most powerful person in leading a company or organization or to be the most popular person in a group of friends or colleagues, then we, like Jesus' disciples, are headed in the wrong direction. And it's time for a turnaround. Rather than focusing on building up the kingdom with things and selfish power, we can focus on God's power. We can turn around and encourage coworkers, offer incentives that help them feel valued, give them chances to be kingdom, kingdom builders too. If we take Jesus' words to heart, then we become persons of integrity. That's when others want to join, join us on the journey. That's the power of God. When we come now to Michael Orr, the third Tui kid, a kid who grew up living in various places with a mom high on drugs and numerous siblings. 12 at, at uh, one article I read each with a different father. He lived in several foster homes as well as on the streets listening to the sounds of gangs fighting. As fate would have it, or I believe as God would have it, a friend took, he, took his son and Michael to visit a football coach. He wanted to show them off. Well, the coach was mesmerized when they walked into his office and the size of this kid blew him away. It doesn't take anything for him to say, yes, I'll take him. I don't even have to know his abilities in sports or academics. He's on the team. Michael then is left there to figure out his way. The school officials take a look at Michael's records, school records. It turns out he has a 
0.76 grade average. 0.7 grade average. High school. And the school administrators don't want, them, want him in their school. The coach points out the word Christian on the sign out front in the school and tells them they might as well paint over that word. Well, that's how he got Michael accepted into that elite private school. Until the Tuies took him in, he had two sets of clothes and he carried a plastic sack, which he kept them in. And he was secretly sleeping in the gymnasium. The coach discovers at the first football practice that Michael has no idea what to do on the football field. The only thing he's got going for him is he's the biggest thing on two legs that ever walked across that field. Let's take a look at Michael. Look for his gifts. Where is God? What gift did you discover in Michael? What helped you experience joy? Determination. Did I hear another? Sorry? Faithfulness. Success. Trust. Protection. Well, I found in him kindness, compassion, and innocence. Even with all the junk life had dealt, he trusted. And because he trusts, he shows his love by protecting them, the ones he loves. Protecting Leanne as, she tells her, as he tells her to stay in the car on one of the times he drives downtown to the projects and goes looking for the last place his mother lived. He tells her to stay in the car, it's not safe. He protects SJ from a serious airbag injury when they have a car accident. It uh, was um, Michael throwing his arm across between the airbag and SJ, and it tore up his arm pretty bad. Otherwise, it would have torn up SJ's face. Michael shows how much his family relationships mean to him by his actions. Sean, or Mr. Tui, stated that it's easy to beat up a kid, but hard to build up a kid. That is true if we are going in the wrong direction. It is hard to build up a child if we yell at them if, for not meeting our expectations. The direction the Tuies took, loving Michael and giving him the resources to use the gifts that God had already given him. What does, God, what does um, Michael teach us about God? God is our protector. God values our relationship. When we are weak, God makes us strong. Our God is bigger than six foot six, 320 pounds. And when we make the move to stand up for valuing people, God's there. Standing to value people that are all God's children, whatever educational level, whatever economic condition, whatever race, or whatever gets in the way of people knowing God's love. God protects us. Michael's position as offensive tackle on the field was to protect the quarterback's blind side, the most vulnerable spot as the quarterback raises his arm to make that pass. It gives the quarterback confidence that he won't get hit. When we are on the field of life, vulnerable to words that hurt, failures in life that make hope seem insurmountable, or brokenness that, hears, that appears to have no healing in sight, that's when it's time to turn around and trust God's protection. God is our offensive tackle. God helps us win whatever battles and games we face. It may not be the win we were looking for, but a win in attitude and hope towards building God's kingdom. 
When we become the offensive tackle for God's team, we protect, protect the people God loves. We face opponents with firmness in our words and actions that show the best way to live and love. There are places nearer than we want to think where a child is in need of food or shelter and positive relationships. We can look at our own state statistics. I just uh, received my copy of the 2017 Kids Count data book. And yes, there shows some minor, modest improvements in caring for Oklahoma's children, but our state needs to do more. The CEO for the Oklahoma Institute of Child Advocacy says, a ranking of 36th place out of 50 states is not good enough for our children. I agree. Oklahoma is 28th in economic well-being related to child poverty, family employment, and housing costs. More than one in five children in, grow, in Oklahoma are growing up in poverty, or below the poverty line. One in five. We are 29th in health. Children lacking insurance child and teen death rates, low birth weight babies, and alcohol and drug abuse among teens. We are 39th in education, which includes, according to their documentation, children ages three and four not in school, fourth graders not proficient in math, eighth graders not proficient in um, uh, reading, no, reading for fourth graders, math for eighth graders, and high school students not graduating on time. We are 39th in family and community. 12% of Oklahoma's children live in high, high poverty neighborhoods. Do you know where those are? Are they around somewhere? They're not far. Maybe you can do some research. We have far higher average of teen births than the national average. Who protects the blind side in these situations? God calls us to make holy tackles as we, ad as we address the issues of children without adequate health care, to engage in holy conversations that make us more comfortable around people and issues with which we don't agree and to seek out resources that give life and encouragement to those needing protection from hate and abuse. God is always with us practicing living love. God is full of grace, helping us to try again and again and forgiving us when we mess up. God gives us and God wants us to choose love and act on that love. So take heart, my friends. Because of God's grace, we can turn around and become like children, eager to play, happily asking more questions, ready to experience joy in serving, and encouraged by God to care for all God's people. Know that you're loved. Do the right thing and make a holy tackle. I want you to try something this week. Take one of the words we heard this morning, one of the gifts, one of the, the characteristics that show God. Take that word, you could write it on a piece of paper or just remember it, just hold it and be present with God in it for a moment or longer. Try it every day and see what happens. Gracious God, you are our protector, our encourager, our giver of life. And you have so much in store for us in caring for your people. Help us make a holy tackle here and there to make a difference. Amen.